about to shoot every time before I got to shoot, um, I tend to go ahead and just look at some photo books. So the one I'm looking at right now is The Americans by Robert Frank. And you guys know, you know, this book is amazing. But what's interesting about today is we're gonna be shooting a new camera. This is the Canon F1 new. And uh, it's a very, it looks, it's a trick competitor to the Nikon F3. Uh, it's a super heavy beast and it is one hell of a camera. Um, mounted on top, I have a 50 millimeter 1.4. Right now I have some Across 100 pushed to 400 loaded in. I'm gonna show you guys the camera, talk about it a little bit, take some street photos, show you guys how we did up the film but what we're gonna do really quick is I'm gonna go ahead and charge up drink the rest of this and then we'll go ahead and head out so yee, let's head out all right so the light today is it's meh uh, it's cloudy but then there's patches of Sun in between so shadows and light will be it won't be an issue but at the same time we got to watch out for when the clouds hit and composition and wise. One of the things that I really like about the Canon F1 is that it has aperture priority mode. I don't know if you guys can see it right under there. Um, but the, sh the max shutter speed is 1 2,000th of a second and it has aperture priority. Right now I have it set to 1 4, but I'm gonna go ahead and boost that up to maybe like 5 6. Um, I am shooting 400 speed film, so it shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. So I'm gonna go ahead, try to get that, and let's go out, take a couple shots, and we'll see what we see. All right, we're migrating. We're migrating. This is 400 speed film, and we need more light, especially if we're gonna shoot F F8, F8. Oh, look at that guy. But yeah, oh, it's nice. Guillard Paris. Kind of want to take a picture. Look at him too. He chilling. Wow, I like that. A little red circle. We're gonna use that as a subframe. Frame up the F1 perfectly and get the shot. All right, we're sitting and we're camping. Now we just gotta wait. Wow, look at that guy in the sun. All right, but we're sitting and we're camping and we're gonna wait. Actually, matter of fact, here we go. Time for action. One, two. Nope. Nobody on that one. Matter of fact, I'm gonna move on. I take a shot, actually. Here comes the dude in the red. I really wanna take a picture of that dude though. Straight up, I think it's gonna be like all in one. Here we go, one, two, and... Perfect leading line, look at that, bam, right there. Oh, should I cross the street? Am I gonna get ran over? Nice backpack! Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm not gonna risk it, okay. I'm gonna try to shoot the F1 at F8. Being 400 speed, I think we should be pretty much fine. Uh, but like you can see right here, the shadows are heavy. I like that. <laughs> if you look at those trees, it kind of looks like my hair <laughs> when I have it up. We're heading up to Union Square right now, and we're gonna try to see what's over here. Uh, Union Square, I've shot here before, but I've never gotten anything good. But I'm pretty sure with the lighting right now and some type of art display going on, we will find something. All right, so this is way more apparent about a minute ago. But the clouds, like I said, are coming and going, but there it is. You're gonna see it come right back out. It's a little nice shadow of the table. Some Nick Exposed inspo for you. So far, man, loving the F1. Oh boy, we got a lot of interesting subjects. Look at that dude on the bike, though. He's booking it. He's like, dooby doo, dooby doo, dooby. <laughs> All right, this is perfect. We have a little streak of light coming down right next to this railing and the railing kind of has this U shape to it Which is leading me on to think that I can use this as a compositional leading line I can wait for a person to walk into the light snap the photo either snap the photo of them walking and then the light goes on them or Have them straight directly in the Sun, but I don't know if I'm gonna capture them half body or full body just yet One of the killer features the Canon F1 has is that it's just like the Nikon F3 where you can remove the prism. Now, here's what I'm talking about. You can take this off. Ah, take it off, come on, come on, come on. You can take it off and then you can compose an image through here. And so that's one of the things that I really like about it. You know what I mean? You can just focus through and you're good to go. Matter of fact, just for an example, I'm gonna go ahead, pull this up. It's in focus and take the photo. That simple, that easy. But yeah, that's one of the features that the F1 has, um, and I really, really like it. All right, so it looks like we ran out of film. Now we gotta rewind this thing the usual way. So we press down.
compositionally, I think these two lines right here would work well. I just need two people to be right in between. So I'm going to wait it out for a minute. I got some uh, HP5 pushed to 1600. And I'm going to try to shoot that. And man, when I say Fridays in SF are active, especially around Union Square, it is extremely active. I was walking and remember, like we said, I look at those photo books for inspiration and I had that image of the arrow with the dude walking. Well, first of all, I found this nice little composition, but I'm standing up here because originally when I was down there, it doesn't look as interesting as if you stand up. Now, you guys can see there the idea that I'm trying to get. Somebody walks by, I snapped the image with the arrow and instantly there's an image leading line coming straight to it. The problem is there's a bunch of cars and this part right here, isn't that busy this part of the sidewalk for some wow look at that for some particular reason so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna camp out again wait a little bit i'm gonna shoot this at f11 so i can get most of that in the frame and then i'm gonna go ahead and snap the photo so that's pretty much the idea behind it uh, before we go ahead and take it how's it going man you mind being in the video? I mean, I'm here for a second. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, what you up to today? Man, you know, I've just been walking around, took some shots earlier. What are you shooting with, by the way? Uh, I'm shooting digital right now. So, I have a Canon 6D, but I also have an A1. Oh, hey, this is the... A1 is not the quick I feel it, man. It's the bread of the, this thing right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the best at? No best at? Um, no best at today. People are getting tired of it, so. <laughs> really? They really are. They're like, you stop showing us your best. And I was just like, all right, what? no problem. What camera are you supposed to shoot with? <laughs> Any camera that I have, right? right. Use what you got. I, I have, I mean, I shoot with them. I'm not a So that's the them right there. Oh, is that the A1? That's it. Oh, I like your strap. Where'd you get that from? Uh, I think it was Amazon, honestly. Amazon? Yeah. I that's think so. sick. It's like six bucks. But I'm gonna have my friend make me one because I realized like the Leica one, uh -huh. which is like why I got this. Uh, it's like a climbing one. What kind of lens you got on there? 50. 50F. There it is. Yeah. All right. Hey, do you want to shout out your Instagram? Uh, yeah. I mean, if you if you want to follow somebody who doesn't take that many street shots, <laughs> free dub, right? Yeah. C R E E D U B. There it is. And I'll leave it right here. And don't you have a portrait account as well? I do have a portrait account. Uh, C dot Strickland. S C. Letter C. Dot. S T R I C K L E N. There it is. Follow him, y'all. Follow this me. man bring me up to bring that account up to 213 followers because right now i have 212 so it's so, one person yeah. <laughs> that's all i need one person follows me you'll be good yeah <laughs> dude i shaved the stash and everybody was like what the hell and i was just like <laughs> i didn't what know i didn't know you but you, you probably have that's true i have yeah. all right guys so we just got done chilling around union square but man this man has just knocked a bunch of knowledge and inspiration into my head i'm old no you're not you're like 13 man yeah but, <laughs> so what was that thing you told me about seeing a picture right okay so basically i was just describing evolution right as uh -huh. far as your style or whatever you're doing right is think of it as seeing a picture when you're a child and looking at yourself today if you were to show that picture to some stranger they could draw the connection between you physically and that picture. The only right. difference is that just a few things have changed. Not everything has changed. So that's that's why you want to look at evolution. It's minor tweaks. You're, it, things are going to evolve. They don't have to change. You don't have to flip anything on top of its head to get a different result. It will happen as time goes on. Keep doing what you're doing, whatever that is. You could be shooting or living your life. Okay. But things will evolve as long as you continue the process. So you don't have to worry about trying to make a complete 180, especially if you're happy with what you're doing, right? So hell that's, yeah. that's it, it's just think about it, looking at a picture when you're a child, think about who you are now, you're not the same person back then as you are today. Man. Did you get it? You got it. Uh, did I tell you about beers and camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already know about that? SAC or? Sack. Yeah. yeah. I think they have one in Walnut Creek, but I don't think they're as active. SAC, I think it's like pretty active. With um, Trev Lee in them. But yeah, I'll like, if I ever can make out to one of those, like, let's like, do it, dude. Because like, that'd be easy. Then I'll definitely shoot films, like, <laughs> like that. You know? Um, All right, man. Cool nice meeting you. Yeah, dude. Appreciate it, dude. Pleasure, pleasure.
Try opening it for yourself. Do you want it back? Uh, no, thank you. Be twenty one seventy. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Me too. Please pay with cash the amount shown on the display. If you need a receipt, please press the receipt button. All right, you guys, now I wanna start this off really quick by saying light leaks suck. I hate them so much, but they happen because film is imperfect, I guess, which is part of the beauty, right? Now the Canon F1, before I went out to shoot, I didn't really do a quick little rundown of it. I didn't expect it at all. Um, turns out there was a little piece of the light seal missing right here at the top near the viewfinder. And so it kind of sucked. It let more light than it should in and it exposed on the film. And you guys seen it, that little streak of light that you've seen is a light leak. And that was the result of the Canon F1 having bad light seals. Now folks, I don't want you guys to get the idea that the Canon F1 has that issue. It's I don't want you guys to think that every single Canon F1 new that you get is gonna have that. Pretty much any type of film camera that you get, if it has light seals, is susceptible to getting light leaks. Your Canon A1 program, your Minolta X700, Olympus OM2, you name it, any film camera out there is susceptible to get light leaks at one point. All right, now in this part of the video, what I wanna do is talk about the Canon F1, give you guys my first impressions on what I think about this camera, uh, what I like about it, what I don't like, and also at the end of it, tell you if I would recommend this camera or not. There are a couple of different versions of the Canon F1. This particular model is the Canon F1 New, which is completely different than the Canon F1N. The F1N and the F1 New, the way you can tell uh, whether you have the New is if you, there is a little grip right here. Uh, this little grip will tell you that you have the Canon F1 New. All of the other models like the Canon F1N and just the original Canon F1 won't have that grip and they'll usually have the basic, uh, the basic prism. And so so that's an easy way you can tell whether or not it's the Canon F1 and the F1 new. Now as for differences, I know the original Canon F1 I believe has a mechanical shutter. Uh, the F1 new does run on batteries, so if you are one of those people that don't like cameras that have batteries, the F1 new might, might not be for you. Uh, highly recommend checking out the original F1. Now with that out of the way, the first thing that I want to talk about is the size. Now the Canon F1 is a fairly large camera. My hands are pretty big, but if I put them behind it, 
you can barely see it. So the F1 is pretty big compared to something like a Minolta X700 or even your Canon A1 program. With the size comes a heavy body. Most of this camera right here is made out of metal and that can be a good thing and also a bad thing. The shutter speed selector is made out of metal. The rewind crank is made out of metal. I believe this right here is plastic. For the most part though, everything is solid metal. And in my particular version right here, can show you exactly what this camera is made of, man. This thing is built to last. Uh, there's a ton of brassing all over the sides, all over the, the, the finder at the top. Um, and yeah, man, this thing has seen better days. But nonetheless, even with all that brassing, this camera still functions 100%. Perfect. Now let's talk about the size and weight. Because this is a heavy camera and if you're gonna wear a neck strap, you're gonna want something more wide. If you are easily agitated in the neck by heavy cameras, the F1 new might not be the ideal camera for you, especially if you're gonna be walking, you know, five miles, 10 miles a day, whether doing whatever you're doing. But if you're one of those people who can handle that, that's awesome. This camera is solid, like I said, and this will last you a lifetime. Now, one thing that I really like about the F1 is that it can take the Canon FD glass, which you guys know that it's on the Canon A one program or the Canon A1. So if you own any of those two cameras, if you want to upgrade to something like the F1, which is more professional, uh, you can go ahead, take all of the lenses that you have for that system, throw it onto this and you'll be perfectly fine. Now, my favorite lens for the Canon system, I guess you could say, is the 50 millimeter 1.4. Now, I was tampering around with the 35 millimeter 2.8 as well, which I'm starting to really, really like. So who knows? Maybe you might see more 35 on uh, my SLRs. Now, just like the Nikon F3, the Canon F1 has a remote movable prism, which means you can take this entire thing off at the top here, and then you can go ahead and focus through the focusing screen. Uh, this is a huge advantage for street photographers because, or actually for any photography, if you want to get really low to the ground and you don't want to lay on the ground and kind of snipe right there, what you can do is take off the finder, bring your camera down here, compose the image through the focusing screen right here at the top, and then you can go ahead, angle it up, and do your work. Um, it's a super, super useful an awesome feature. Not to mention you can get different finders for the camera. This one is the, I believe it's the AE, and you can also interchange focusing screens. Now the Canon F1 system, I believe till this day, has the largest amount of accessories and interchangeable focusing screens, prisms of any camera of, I think, till this day. That being said, this camera can shoot all in manual mode if you want, has a max shutter speed of one two thousandths of a second, and can go all the way down to bulb. Uh, well, one cool and neat feature is that little A right there. And you guys know A stands for auto exposure. Now this is what makes the F1 a really dope camera. There are actually two auto exposure modes that you can take on this camera, but the way to access them is buying different accessories. Here's what I mean. If you want aperture priority, you're gonna to need to buy this finder right here. And like we mentioned earlier, this is the AE finder. Uh, if you see this little tab right up at the top, it's gonna to go ahead and slide right over. And there's this little pin. And basically this little pin will tell the camera if you have the AE finder on. And if it does recognize it and it does match it, uh, you will get aperture priority with the AE finder. Now let's say for example, you're in the 1980 Olympics and you need to shoot five frames per second. How can you do that with the Canon F1? Well, first of all, it's possible. You're gonna need to get the motor drive. The motor drive sits right at the bottom, um, and what's cool about it is you can go ahead and boost your frames per second up to, I believe it's like three frames per second or five frames per second, something like that. But you can do that on this camera, and you can shoot five frames per second continuously. Now folks, the F1 by all means is not a quiet camera. If you're one of those people who dig the quiet sounds of a camera so you feel more discreet and more, uh, you know, less noticeable in public, this camera might not be for you. Just listen really quick to the sound of it. Now initially, that's pretty much all that really stood out to me about the F1 new. Uh, again folks, this is just my first impressions, it's not a review. And now comes the big question, who is this camera for? Well, first of all, I'm gonna tell you guys who this camera is not for. This camera right here is not for somebody that wants a super silent camera. Somebody that wants something that will be light enough to travel around with that you won't get tired of bringing. Uh, somebody that doesn't like something that's heavy and made out of metal and they just don't like pure film goodness. But if you're one of those people like me who like that nice clunky shutter sound, 
they like the size they like the weight they want something that'll withstand time that's built like a tank literally you can see it on here it is completely made out of metal and uh, there are plastic components but folks the f1 is a solid camera super solid it's super hefty highly 100 percent recommend the canon f1 this has to be one of the greatest slrs in my opinion ever made right up there with the olympus om2n the nikon f3 and the x700 uh, you will not disappoint with this camera but i'm still on the fence what camera is better the canon f1 or the nikon f3 Guess you'll have to find out in the next episode of King James. So folks, thank you for watching another King James video. And as always, Minolta gang. Whew.